you know, they're a very strong team, and I believe they have a Thorn and a Stalker, right? Is that a lot playing a Stalker? Varlaw playing Alchemist and Blips being the Thorn, if I'm not correct. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, because they have those weird skins, and the Thorn looks kind of skinny, like a yeah. sapling. But yeah, no, Thorn, Stalker, and Alchemist, I believe, is correct. Yes, and that is their most played as well. But... Alchemist, if we can get Blisps playing very well as that Thorn and trapping the Alchemist in the Dead Roots, Jackasm can't throw his Harpoon to try and help save. He can't throw a Shuriken. Uh, you're not going to get any kind of Runic Infusion Ultimate coming out from Rex, although you will see Woje come out to try and help Chip Saiyan. And Chip Saiyan, when he's stuck in those roots, you can't throw out sleep, you can't throw out deadly injection. All you can do is throw out a heal on top of yourself, barrier, try and run out. But if Bliss, Bliss, that P just really messes me up. Bliss. Bliss. <laughs> yeah, Bliss. If Bliss gets Chip Saiyan stuck inside of his dead roots, it could spell disaster for the SK Gaming team. Zetalot also can follow up with a much more control from himself as Stalker. Very annoying against an Alchemist, especially since you can, you know, get those debuffs off of you with the Deadly Injection in the sleep. It'll be very interesting to see how they play this one out. And Forecourt, I will give you the honors this time of taking this one. See, there's that these two weird, very good teams. It's that weird Thorn skin again. I don't know. Looks... Female? Female Thorn? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, oh. the thing that haunts you in your nightmares at night. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's it. Right. Yeah. That's the female form. <laughs> but yeah, semifinals, guys, here. Beyond Gaming, three versus three. Qualifying round number one. Justin and TV, QPad, and Thermal Take all coming together to bring us this live, great entertainment. And talking about the great Zedalot, he's actually taking a lot of damage right now, but so is Chip Cyan. And this is what they try to do to fast moving men. And oh, there we go, the dead roots with Chip in it. And yes, he does go down. Zedalot gets out of that with the skin of his teeth, but no, he's going to find himself a soul bolt with his name on it as now Rex and Jackass and the familiar duo are going to go two on two against Varlolol and Bliss. So yeah, the female Thorn trying to do her best to cheat these guys off, but Jackasm and Rex, I mean, the hit point bar advantage really going to SK, but Jackasm taking a ton of damage right there. He's not going to hit that mud walk, but Blisp is going to put up that shield to try to stop these guys in their tracks. Great double sweep coming out right there. Now Rex and Jack are going to be trying yet again. It does look like very much the Colt team on the defensive, but they do have that healer ready to go. Jackasm taking another set of huge amount of damage, and Blisp is still actually looking really good compared to Jack. Jack gets that runic barrier going, but Blisp is still actually coming back, for, gets his own barrier, and now Jack has him is off in the corner, going to try, to try to do some healing. We really don't want that to happen. Where is Jack as him? He is really far away, but he's also healing up at a decent steady rate while Rex tries to go two on one. Keep him off the bat, but Blisp and Jack has him going head to head. Oh no, we get the immobilized button. The goo goes down. Now Rex has to take on an alchemist by himself. Uh, very possible at this point. He does have that ultimate ready to go. As soon as that barrier comes down, all we have to do is just Woje over there. And there we go. There it is with the EX as well. No, oh, the clarity going to come out. I not going to be using that ultimate, which is probably a very probably a good idea at this point. Another sleep while going down. And I don't know. Well, I don't know it's what's it's because of the sleep, you know. He knows that Varlol is going to save that sleep if he is going to try and use a uh, Rune of Confusion. And, you know, that or instant injection. Varlol is very good at being able to dodge as an alchemist, especially with that barrier. 15% more mobility. Sleep goes out. Why is he... Okay, there he is. Gonna get the rune. I'm just like, what is going on? Sudden death fog, fog is creeping in. Yeah. If Varlol could get off that sleep just as the fog comes in, could actually put a lot of damage in. Oh, no, there's the... Oh! Dude. Oh my gosh, he knows it too. He's like, I had my sleep up. What is going on? Clarity, nothing. He didn't throw anything out. He just uh. ran in fear because he knows that tension is building up, you know? Rex must have heard me halfway across the world. He's like, well, screw that. I'll just use it right now. Fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, that always happens to us commentators. We're like, they're not going to do that. It wouldn't be wise. And then it's just like, he pulls it off and it's like, what? You know, there's no way. Um... But here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the beginning of this next round. Jackasm purposely misses his harpoon right there because he saw Treacherous Roots was on Blizz. 
And look at this, we're gonna be seeing the Stalker just try and be all sneaky snake-like, getting that puncturing strike. Nice EX clarity, that's going to blind Jackasm, and he was just running for his life at that point. Chip Science stuck sort of in the background, and oh, Zedalot trying to get that super puncturing strikes off three attacks, but no, that is not gonna happen. We're gonna have Jackasm trying to hit both players at once. Zedalot still trying to get that kill. Can he get it? He is gonna use his Shadow Hunt, and oh my goodness, he just jumps on out of there. It is gonna be a 2v2 fight. Zedalot, one more hit and he could go down. Oh my gosh, so, so low. We'll see how they play it. One more hit and he's dead. Oh no, Varlol just actually hitting that Kunju. Whale Burst from Rex, gonna be sniping with that shotgun. Well, I guess you can't really snipe with a shotgun, but gonna be taking out that kill <laughs> onto Zedalot. And really, ah, shoot, if Zedalot, uh, he hit that triple puncturing strike, then that would have been game over for Chip Cyan. But Chip just running out there just barely, just barely was able to stay alive for long enough, able to get that, uh, you know, help Jack Asim and Rex do enough damage. Yeah, well, they did do enough damage. I noticed, though, that both games, Rex comes down to it at the end. He's like full hit points. Nobody's even paying attention to him whatsoever. The big damage going down right now on Chip and a big support coming out from Rex. But Jackasm already has that ultimate. Going to be throwing it down. Blisk has to get away from that, but he also has those dead roots ready to go. If he can get Chip in that corridor, it's a very good opportunity to catch at least two of them. But no, Rex throws out that Runic Infusion. Varlor! Varlor lol! He has to get out of there. No, he's gonna die. It is gonna be a trade-off. And now again, look at this. Rex, almost full hit points. Jack has him hurt with the temporary. Yes, fine. Zedalot is gonna have to try to do some fancy... No, nope, never mind. And <laughs> is gonna go down as well. 3-0. That's gonna be game number one. Sorry, map number one to SK Gaming. We're going to just dive right here into the next one as we look at these end values. A lot of damage coming up, but both Rex and Jack have been fairly consistent in their output. Yeah, and that's what makes SK so deadly. The fact is that they have Spearmaster. Yeah, he can be a high variance character. Jack Asm's played him. Okay, I... I want you to look at this when you get in game. 98.8% Spear Master on Jackasm. Really? Like, really? 98.8%. .8%. This guy knows him to a T. Knows when to Kanji, knows when to Fleetfoot, knows when to Whirling Blade, knows the exact cast time range, speed, you name it. He knows it, lineups, combos with any character. He is the man. Rex, same thing with Inhibitor. He hasn't quite played as an Inhibitor as long or as much, but still practices him over and over. And Inhibitor, yeah, he can be very, very lethal. And he uses Barrier at the correct time. He uses it, you know, those spell locks. He uses Woje and Whale Burst when needed. Most people don't think about using their EX because... Well, Inhibitor is so good with his Runic Infusion. It heals, it does damage, amplifies, weakens, all, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, he does use it and he knows how to stay back by Chip Cyan, making sure that he's okay. And look at that positioning. You know, he's there just to help Chip Cyan right now. And he's staying a little bit in the background, making sure he's up top in case Varlol decides to try and throw something out. Spaces as soon as he sees something go on. And now he's just going to get onto Blisk. And at that time, Jack has him now went back to help Chip Cyan. Their team play is excellent, excellent at this point. Punishing anybody that's just trying to train onto Chip Cyan. Chip Cyan has his own barrier, as well as Rex's runic barrier, to help out against any kind of that burst pressure. The, uh, leaving Rex and Jack has him, all the back hits they could ever imagine in their life. So, uh, really, just being able to team support, staying in that position where if one goes offensive, the other one goes defensive to help peel is making SK Gaming really one of the top teams to contend with ever. And depending on what kind of strategy you're doing, they adapt after one round or two. And that's what's so spectacular about them. Now they definitely play very well. And now they're up 1-0 again. They're already up one map. So if they can get this, they're going to go on to the finals. And I think they're just a little bit crowd favored at this point. Oh, look at that. Jack has 20 seconds into the match. Already has that ultimate. So much damage going down on the Varlor la la la. And to Blisp and Zedalot, they might actually be able to get Chip because we did have Rex and Jack just go full-on offensive out onto 
uh, Varlor Lol, but yeah, Zedalot paying the price. We do got that ultimate going out. Uh, don't know why, but Blitz thought it was a good idea, and yeah, there's no way that this Thorn is going to be able to take on the you know top two players of their classes in the world, and now it's 2-0 for SK Gaming. One quick more match, and they're going to be going on to the finals. Yeah, that is true, and oh, one thing as well, you know, Blisp and said a lot. They they took a lot of damage from Chip Sion, yet Varlol didn't really do much to Jackasm or Rex because of those counterattacks and the mind games that happen. You know, Kunju, if you're a good player, you're not going to hit Jackasm's Kunju most of the time, except he uses them at really sneaky times. And like, he saw that Defiling Plant come out, and that's when he's like, oh, I'm just going to Kunju at this time. Boom, gets on in, gets a couple more pieces of energy from that. And look at this, Whirling Blade, oh my goodness. He's just going to be slicing and dicing at that point. Better than the Slap Chop, it is Jackasm the Spearmaster. So, <laughs> anywho, that's that's my little plug for him. Excellent, excellent play. 3-0 victory. Than the slap Chop, we should make a meme out of that. Better than Jack <laughs> slicing Adam, better and dicing. Better than the Slap Chop. <laughs> exactly. It's like, whirlwind. <laughs> slicing and dicing, better than the Slap Chop. Yeah. Whatever. So, good game. SK Gaming. Top Gaming Club only sponsors top gaming teams. Yeah. Rex, oh. Chipsyan, and Jackasm definitely take proud. that title. And they are doing SK mighty, mighty fine proud.